all across America and around the world. This is Veterans Radio. This is Veterans Radio. Welcome to Veterans Radio. I am Jim Fossone. I'm the officer of the deck today. We've got some great programs for you. I think you'll find very interesting. We always want to remind you, you can find more about Veterans Radio at its Facebook site or at the web. VeteransRadio.org is our new URL, VeteransRadio.org. Where we're on the web 24-7, you can find a lot of our podcasts there as well. We post new ones every Tuesday, so you can get a new story, a new interview, something you didn't know before by going to veteransradio.org. And before we get started, we want to thank our sponsors. First up, we want to thank National Veteran Business Development Council, nvbdc.org. It was established to certify both service-disabled and veteran-owned businesses. You'll find out how they can help your business by going to nvbdc.org. We want to thank Legal Help for Veterans. Legal Help for Veterans fights for veterans' disability rights all across the nation. You can reach them at 800-693-4800 or on the web at LegalHelpForVeterans.com. This is Veterans Radio Spotlight on PuroClean and its franchisees. PuroClean is a leader in property em- emergency services, helping families and businesses overcome the devastating setbacks caused by water, fire, mold, and other conditions that result in property damage. It's independently owned by franchisees that do the real work in their communities. PuroClean is known as the paramedics of property damage. It provides water damage remediation, flood water removal, fire and smoke damage remediation, biohazard cleanup on commercial and residential customers. PuroClean.com is where you can check this out. And by the way, there's a veteran's discount uh, on the franchise. But today we get to talk to two business owners, Jesse and Jennifer Wine. Welcome to Veterans Radio. Thank you. We're happy to be here. Thank you. Well, we're going to talk a little later about your uh, time in the Wisconsin National Guard. Uh, Jesse, you served, I think it was eight years, uh, came out as a sergeant. Jennifer, I think you had a 12-year career in the Army National Guard, and we want to talk about those experiences. But here we're talking to you specifically because you are business owners, you have a franchise with PuroClean. Why did you settle on a business with PuroClean? And Jennifer, I'm going to toss that one to you. Sure. So, um, so I we decided to go in because we were we were looking for a franchise that kind of exhibited like all of our values. Um, and, and when we when we settled on PuroClean, we had gone to the Meet the Team Day. And when we walked into the front office for the first time, they had brought all of the employees out to greet us. So we got to meet everybody from the top down and uh, we were accepted uh, as if we were already family members. And that experience is very similar to the experience you have as a military member. Um, No matter where you are, where you come from, if you're in the service, Marines, National Guard, Army, Navy, it doesn't matter who you are. You walk into a room with prior service veterans and you are instantly family. And that is the connection that I felt the moment I walked into Puro Clean. And from that point, it there was there was no other choice. This was the only place for us. Well, and I should mention that Steve White, the chief operating officer of Puro Clean, is an Army vet, uh, served in the U.S. Army, was a captain. So he probably had some of those same values and experiences that And wanted to make sure that you felt them as well. So it's good to hear that you did, Jennifer. Yes, absolutely. You know, that gets us to another question, uh, and I'll toss this, Jesse, your way, which is, what's the best part of owning your own business? Uh, It's a great question. Um, Obviously, the, you know, running, being able to call the shots um, is is important. Uh, Being able to expand my business in the way I want to grow it, you know, to how I want to grow it is 
is very important to us as you know new business owners. Uh, and what's great about that is Pure Clean Corporate, you know, you know, they don't stand in our way. They they support us and encourage us. You know, and you know, yes, yeah, sure, you you have some some bumpers, some guide rails, um, but it's for your own good. Um, you know, and so, uh, you know, it's it's really great. Um, you know, I enjoy helping people. You know, it's, it's very satisfying job to go in and help people with you know their their homes, you know, some of their, their biggest purchase they're ever going to make, you know, and we come in and when it's destroyed and we rebuild it and, uh, you know, it's, it's just very fulfilling job, uh, you know, and, you know, it's just a great part of, you know, uh, what I, what I want to do, um, you know, in my life to, you know, to help, to help people. Well, Jesse, um, you, you have a long history in construction. We'll talk a little bit about that later, but um, one of the things franchise franchises have are sort of standard operating procedures and you're meeting people on the worst day of their life they've had a flood they've had a water break they've had a fire and you've got a process uh, ex- explain how standard operating procedures not unlike in the army kind of help you go through and 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 fix the worst day of somebody's life sure yeah I, you wear a lot of hats so your sops you know we you know, we, we keep them in the trucks, you know, like, Hey, we're dealing with this situation. Don't, you know, we, we got, you got to follow the steps. You know, it's important because a lot of people don't do this every day. You know, we can look at a situation and know exactly how it's going to end at, you know, two months from now, but the homeowners have no idea. Uh, and so we're there to, to educate, to help, uh, sometimes a shoulder to cry on, um, you know, and, you know, having guidelines in place, your SOPs, uh, it just it helps when you have new employees. You know, it, it allows the experienced guys to re- have a resource. It's like your, you know, your your dash ten and your and your Humvees. You know, you, you got you. Know, where do you go if you need, you need something? So, uh, yeah. One one yeah. I want to before we run out of time, I want to talk about one other thing. Is you mentioned you like helping people, <laughs> but you get to do it in your community in Wisconsin. Talk a little bit about how that's the most. Uh, certainly a satisfying part of the business. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Jim, you want, okay. I'll take it. Well, I mean, you know, why did we join the army? We wanted to help or, you know, we wanted to serve, you know, we joined the national guard, you know, you know, we helped people in our own communities through disasters and I've been deployed on multiple s- scenarios and fields of operation, but you know, nothing beats helping your neighbors, you know, uh, it's a very satisfying feeling well, let's let's point people to if they're interested, you can go to PuroClean.com, read more about what this business opportunity looks like. As I mentioned earlier, they have a veterans uh, discount on being able to get in. So it's PuroClean.com. But I now want to go back to a little bit more about your uh, military experiences, uh, Jennifer and Jesse. Um because I think a lot of folks maybe don't understand what the Wisconsin Army National Guard does or the National Guard in general does, and you've uh, been overseas. Tell us a little bit about your military career, Jesse. Um, so I joined uh, 2002, uh, so I was very uh, post-9-11 uh, geared, you know, um, and so I uh, went, I was in 11 Bravo, uh, did my basic training down in Fort Benning, Georgia. Uh, and then I came back and was deployed right to, uh, Bosnia and then, uh, came, and did that for about, a, uh, about a year, year, a few months, and then came home. And shortly after that, we had Katrina hit and we went down there as a or Wisconsin national guard unit, spent a few months down there, uh, handing out water, doing, you know, just a lot of, a lot of different things. Um, and then we did, uh, in 2008, a couple years after that, we uh, were having a border wall crisis. Uh, I went down to Arizona uh, for a couple months doing that, uh, reserve and report, uh, helping with uh, detainees to type situ- situations, um, you know, and, and just alleviated some of the um, border patrol uh, crisis down there. So, and then, uh, and then after that, it's a couple years. So, you know, you do your weekends and your once a month, uh, you know, the drill, but, and then, uh, in 2009, uh, I was deployed to Iraq. Um, uh, and then uh, shortly after that, uh, get back, I, uh, ETS. 
it's from 2010. You know, it's it's sort of interesting because sprinkled in the, if you will, hardcore military stuff uh, in Bosnia and Iraq, there's a lot of humanitarian work that uh, the National Guard does. As you mentioned, Katrina is a good example of it. And I don't think the general population understands that, uh, that, that the National Guard's helping both in their home state, but when called upon and federally mobilized, they are also doing humanitarian missions elsewhere. So thanks for sharing a little bit of that. Jennifer, how did a nice girl like you end up in 12 years with a military career, huh? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, so it was right around the time that I was actually getting ready to head off to college. Um, I had just graduated and I had a, a friend of mine who was joining the service and I was really interested in joining the service. My uh, my parents actually talked me out of it, and they said, "Hey, go to your first year of college, see if that's what you you know make, experience college first before you make such a life life changing decision." Um, so I did. I took their advice, and I went off to college. And it was actually the I, I believe it was in April of 2020, uh, 2001 that I decided that I was indeed going to join the service. Um, it 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 offered me um, the lure of excitement that I wanted, the ability to help people. Um, and actually, I want to say that the initial draw to the service, uh, you know, they say marketing is everything and a picture has a thousand words. Um, there was a, um, an advertisement that they that the Army National Guard had stuck in magazines that I had grown up seeing, and it was an image of a soldier repelling from a helicopter over a body of water, and they were rescuing a little girl. And when I saw that photo, it was like, that is what I want to do. Wow, that's, that's that, has stuck, wanna... that has stuck with you all these years, hasn't it? It has, it has. And, it, and if I might say, I do, with restoration industry that we're in today, I see that image as what we do today as well, because we are still going in, rescuing people from damage and from catastrophes that they don't know how they're going to get out of. But Jesse and I and our crew, we go in and we're rescuing them on a daily basis. So, you know, it's still, it's still the heart of who I am. And I'm just grateful that I get to continue doing that even after my service. Well, one of the things you often find is that what folks do in the military is public service, then continues to ring through or ripple through the rest of their life. Mm-hmm. Jesse saw the worst of it in Katrina, right? So what you're doing today is is attacking some of that worst of it that you saw in Katrina. And Jennifer, that image that you have and, and drew you to, I want to be of service, I want to help rescue people, is part of what you're doing today. But tell us what you did in the military. Yep. So I so I joined, as I said, I joined the National Guard in 2001 uh, as a medic. Um, I was going to college as a pre-med student, so I thought, well, I'll join as a medic because that was kind of the career path that I was on at the time. Um, I joined a military police unit in Indiana- Indianapolis, and um, shortly after I got back from my training, September 11th happened. Um, we were not called up during that time period, but we were just, you know, high alert. Um, And then in 2004, they were getting ready to mobilize Bosnia, and they were only going to take their military police staff. Um, They were not going to take their specialty staff. So I would have been left. And I didn't want that because they were, it was my team. I didn't want to be left behind. So I went and I recertified as a military police officer. That way I could be deployed with my unit as a police officer, but then also still support them medically as a medic. Um, So in 2004, I deployed to Bosnia as a military police officer. It's actually where I met Jesse. Um, I joke that he followed me home, so I decided to keep him. Yeah, there, there's a lot of uh, these sort of stories in the military where this is where I met my spouse. Uh, but for this particular, and again, if you hadn't retrained, this would never have happened. That's correct. It wouldn't have never happened. Yep. Yeah. Well, and, and to answer the, the thoughts everyone's having, no, I would just, was not arrested. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, 
<laughs> he, may have, he may have almost went into a garbage can, though. You know, you know, we kind of mess with the MPs, the infantry guys. But. Yeah, especially little little ones. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, and obviously it was a career that you uh, enjoyed, and time, you know, everybody gets out at some point or another. And uh, what year did you get out? Uh, so I got out in 2013. Uh, once I got back from Bosnia, um, I. I switched colleges to a Wisconsin college. Uh, so I'm, I'm from Wisconsin initially. And um, so I went to a, a local college and switched to the uh, 135th Medical Company in Waukesha. And that's where I that's where I served out the rest of my time. And, you know, a question I'm asking a lot of, of vets these days in today's tough recruiting environment and and your your mom and dad said no no don't join you know let's try to talk you out of it for a year how do, how do you guys give advice if a niece or a nephew or a neighbor's friend or a, your children come along and say hey i'm thinking of joining up what would you tell them i say don't tell your mom and dad get in the car with me <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I, no, I, we encourage them because it, it has been instrumental in shaping our lives and it really does give you a lot of um, a lot of great experience, leadership ability. It, it, you grow up, I mean, really fast and it, and it helps you to focus your attention and your the direction of your life. It helps to focus that direction of your life. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I have a lot of niece, niece, nieces and nephews that I, you know, tell if you want to, you want out of this small town, join the army, you know, or, well, I, sometimes I say Air Force now. You, know? <laughs> <laughs> you live, you learn. Never, yeah. never the Marines. Um, yeah, I, no, no, no. I've got relatives in the Marines. So, and, and I think uh, the army instills in you is, is particularly when you're younger folks, sort of a set of values. I know uh, from reading some materials, Values were important to you, both as a family and as as potential business owners. So again, this kind of all ripples through life. Your service kind of ripples through your values as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. You know, this is a definitely you know owning a business like this is an extension of selfless service. You know, you're definitely putting putting yourself uh, last in a lot of the situations. So. And that's, that's how it should be. Jesse, uh, give us some further thoughts on uh, Pure Clean. Sure. I mean, so currently, uh, one in seven owners are veterans in Pure Clean. We currently have uh, about 37 veteran owned businesses, and our goal is to uh, get up to 100 uh, or more. Um, we were recently named top veterans franchise by Entrepreneur Magazine. So, you know, that's a lot of things moving, you know, uh, in the right direction. You know, uh, we like to say Pure Clean's on the move. Uh, and, you know, we're 100% behind that. Uh, we love, you know, Pure Clean. Uh, you know, they're just a very great uh, franchise. They really get behind their owners. And I can't say enough good things about uh, the ownership, Mark Davis, Frank Torrey, uh, Steve White. They're just great down-to-earth owners uh, and CEOs. Well, it's good to have that kind of validation from outside parties about how this is a veteran-centric franchise opportunity. You're, you've experienced it. You know it to be true, but it's nice to have that validation as well. Absolutely. Yeah, we really appreciate you letting us, letting us uh, talk with you today. And, um, yeah, we're happy to, happy to help anytime. Yep. And then uh, I would like to add uh, for – for any veterans who are considering entrepreneurship, I just want to I just want to let you guys know: don't be afraid to take the plunge, because you have the skills, the determination, and the grit to succeed. And and owning a business is just a new way to serve, and it's a very rewarding path. Well, I thank the t- uh, you again, uh, Jesse and Jennifer Wine, for the time that you've spent with us today on Veterans Radio. Thank you again. Thank you. And I want to thank everybody for listening to Veterans Radio today. I am Jim Fossone. It's been a pleasure to be your host. I'm a veterans disability lawyer at Legal Help for Veterans, and you can reach us at 800-693-4800 or legalhelpforveterans.com on the web. You can follow Veterans Radio on Facebook, 
and listen to its podcasts and internet radio shows by visiting us at veteransradio.org. That's veteransradio.org. And until next time, you are dismissed. If you have a VA claim denied by the Board of Veterans' Appeals, contact Legal Help for Veterans at 1-800-693-4800. They're experts in handling cases before the U.S. Court of Appeals for Veterans' Claims. Their number again, 1-800-693-4800. We again want to thank our national sponsors, the National Veterans Business Development Council, nvbdc.org, VA Ann Arbor Health Care System, the Vietnam Veterans of America, Charles S. Kettles Chapter, Ann Arbor, Michigan. VFW Graf O'Hara Post 423 in Ann Arbor. And the American Legion Press Corn Post 46, also in Ann Arbor. We appreciate all your support. You can go to veteransradio.net, click on the sponsor level, and continue to support keeping Veterans Radio on the air. And until next time... You are dismissed.